Welcome to Grey Primer, a weekly show that's mostly about miniatures. My name is Nick, I'm your host, and on this episode I'm continuing Necromunda November, and I am looking at the House of Iron, the Orlock Gang. Up to now in Necromunda November, I've only been looking at starter sets, Dark Uprising, Underhive. I'll link both in the show notes below. And the gangs I've been exposed to so far have been the likes of Asher, which are those female warriors, the alchemists, the chemists. We've seen the Goliaths, which are like Vacron Hulk beasts. What else? We've got Corpse Grinders, the Coronate Cannibalistic Nutjobs. And finally, the Palanite Enforcers, the Subjugators, the, the Law Enforcement Patrols of the uh, Underhive. Tomorrow I'm going to get stuck into some religious cultists with the uh, the House Cod, or they serve many different masters and, unfortunately, appetites. But what we're looking at today are the Industrialists of Necromunda, the beating, grinding, cog-filled heart the center of the machine of what makes the underhive work and the profits that can be made from that and these are the people who are protecting those profits orlock would be the closest thing you would have to like astra militarum just in the sense that these are not chemically enhanced they're not vat grown these are just regular naturally born human beings that don't rely on stims or chemistry they just rely on developing skill sets and maintaining their weapons and having the, the best weapons they can possibly afford. You can be on this side, the kind of the ruling elite of House Orlock, or you can be on the other side, the Surf. And that's not S-U-R-F, that's S-E-R-F. That is the society of, of people who are just toiling their entire lives within the the industry of the Orlocks, within this sort of house of iron. I think we're yet to find a good guy within Necromunda, uh, but certainly this is the closest to, I guess, natural born humans we're going to get. Let's get stuck in to the Orlocks. Um, and like other gangs here, you can go for um, assembling named characters or you can go for assembling um, your, your own sort of custom or lock gang, which is kind of cool idea. Um, lots of yellow and black striping here on the weapons. It's kind of distinctive. And there's kind of almost like a baby blue coloration to their clothing, baby blue and white. So I guess those are their, their main uh, house colors. Let's see what we've got. Okay, is this color. It is the first of the Necromunda guides that I've seen in color. Although, but it looks like the only color parts are their names and their numbers. That's fine. I'm sure they looks like they go together pretty straightforward here. Look like there are a lot of options for variant builds. But um, maybe there are inside some great names here. We got uh, what what's kind of cool. We got Grim down the bottom there. We got uh, Zed Hackjaw. Mo Two Fist, <laughs> Gunner Ski, Rocky. Very cool. Yeah, a bit of character in there as well. And then that sprue is, is it a duplicate? It is indeed. So, so let's have a look. And very clean weapons. Nothing here sort of says that these are welded together or upcycled. These look like they came out fresh from the factory are being maintained and used as directed. <laughs> yep, very nice. I'll get some of the 25 millimeter Necromunda bases and let's have a look at the cards. As we saw with Goliath and Asher in the Underhive box, you start off with some blank ones so you can make your own heroes. And then we have cards that can be used for, just for Orlock. And then cards that can be used by any gang. So these are just the Orlock ones. You see all the names there. And then these are the other ones for any gang. And I mean, I just grab one here. What's a few teeth? Uh, play this when a friendly fighter suffers a flesh wound. The flesh wound is ignored. Any other effects of the injury still apply. So very cool. And again, really nice card stock. Nice Necromunda branding on the back there. Cool. Alrighty, let's go get the miniatures built and I'll be right back. 
So far in Necromunda November, I've looked at the houses of Goliath, Asher, Corpse Grinders, and the Palanites. And I'm not sure I have a favorite yet. Probably the least favorite would be the Corpse Grinders, because I've never really connected with the corn design aesthetic that Games Workshop has. I've just never really got that at all. So ruling out the corpse grinders is, you know, in my sort of favorites. I'm kind of left with three very close together. I, I like what I've seen so far, much more than I have done with the likes of kill teams. And they feel much closer to the quality of Warcry for me or Blood Bowl. These sort of um, small teams, box sets that uh, have a lot of heart and a lot of personality. So here we have the Orlocks. These are good old-fashioned, you know, human-born, non-stim, non-vat grown. These are just regular old humans. And like I said in the intro, they're all about sort of the quality of their training, the quality of their weaponry. And they have this massive sort of industrial superpower going. So let's check out these, these minis. Uh, how do they go together? They're fine. Like with everything I've seen from Necromunda, there are two identical sprues. You have the same torso, the same legs, and then you have the variations on the heads and the arms. And it's really clever. It's really clever the way they've been designed. Some of them are a little fiddly, uh, but these actually went together okay. As you can see, they've gone for kind of a, I guess, a 90s, 80s, 90s biker gang sort of aesthetic on the hairdos. You do imagine these all have sort of Big dirty Harleys sort of parked up in a line somewhere outside the pub. And that all their weapons are shoved into panniers. Leather, you know, aged leather sort of panniers at the back of their Harleys. And they just ride around the underhive and in cool little biker gangs. I think that's the the aesthetic for me that sort of carries through this. They all they all feel like apocalyptic biker gangs. And just as I go through each of these, you can see these. That's kind of a a Bane head on this one, great hair, but you can see that there's nice variety, but they're very clearly all within the same same gang. Some great weapons here, and um, really nicely detailed. I love this guy's weapon here, this sort of two-handed one. It's got this very unusual um, grip that kind of curls around the back of the wrist, but also has a, a handle which juts out from it here too. So quite strange, quite complex, but massive barrel. As you can see, I've, I'm still drilling on the barrels. And somebody did ask if I do this before or after priming. I always do it before priming. And you can see some really nice sort of fabric sort of details here through up the leg, across the back of the jacket, and the augmatics within the arm here to allow him to hold such a heavy, heavy weapon. But I do love the sculpt on this guy's head. It looks like it should be a Mythbusters. Nice pose on this one. I'm liking the sort of the skull on the waist here. The tiny little details like this um, belt going across the body. Cool weapon. Uh, just, I think, a really nice strong pose. I'm liking the combat knife. And uh, yeah, there's not a huge amount of color, as you can see here in the, the paint scheme that they've gone with. There's kind of this dash of blue. Um, but I think you could have a bit of fun with these too. Maybe introduce some color schemes into the sort of the haircuts and things to designate them as a, a particular part of the, the House of Orlock, but entirely up to you. This is a very biker thing, this chain going here. I wonder, does it end up in his wallet? Great facial expression there as well. I'm loving the, the glasses up in the head. Look at that mustache. Isn't that just magnificent? Like this combat knife, seriously? That's the length of this guy's arm. Imagine the weight in that combat knife. These are not augmented gangers here. <laughs> it's just a regular dude holding a knife that's as long as his arm. Uh, I think these would be fantastic done as um, a biker gang. You know, you could even have the do up the back here as sort of a leather jacket with patches and stuff. Like, you know, Sons of Orlock or something like that around here. And they'd be like, you know, I don't know, it'd be very fine to try to get like president or vice president or something like that in a little patch on the front but you could definitely do something on the back here um to make a like a, a patched up biker jacket uh, that could be a really nice look to them i'm sure somebody's tried that already some more dynamism in this one looks like uh doing something much more dangerous than running with scissors he's running with a 
two foot long combat knife. Are there just no health and safety standards in the underhive? I mean, seriously. And his fingers on the trigger, which is something that GW need to look at. Absolutely love all of the tiny little accessories and personal touches that are all across this. And I think these are really interesting. I think they're, they're, they're great to look at. I think that the color scheme they've gone with here, while it might be consistent with lore, I think it does these miniatures a disservice. I think you could have a lot of fun with these, introducing a little bit of color. Look at that facial expression. You'll probably see from my Instagram that I love miniatures like this, where, where they're sort of pointing off camera like that. They're in like ultra close up. Yep. Very nice. One of my favorites, I think. I think that's one of my favorites so far. I know there was one of the Asher ones that I really like, but I think that probably takes the lead now. And then finally we have Mr. Harpoon. And this is great. End of the Harpoon is connected by chain to, I guess, the, the start of this rope. And then I love the way it's just coiled all the way back and it even sort of leads through in here into the overspill. And then there's a chain right at the end, I guess, to reattach it to the, the device. And that facial expression, it does look like he's struggling a little bit going by that expression but he is so cool love the hair i love the augmatics here attaching it again these heavy weapons with that extra bit of help and a few nice little accessories on his waist there and yeah loving the the bandana too around the around the head so yeah a, a great great set of minis i had no problem putting them together minimal sort of cleanup. Again, with the sculpted Necromunda bases, you just have to be very careful about where you put your glue points to make sure there's enough purchase for the miniature. You wouldn't want that sort of separating because it didn't have enough contact points. I really want to see them done up as a biker gang, get some gray into those beards. I think they could be really interesting to look at. But that's Orlock. And to continue on with Necromunda November, I'm back again tomorrow with the Cawdor gang. Uh, so looking forward to that. But until then, like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye bye.